This is this exercise I give, I used to give my students, but they just never seemed to, like about half of them just didn't get it. So my exercise is this. I would say, okay, now the same, the same person who came up to Jesus, you know, so he, he walks away, he can't do it, he can't sell everything, he's rich, he's got a lot of money, there's no way he's gonna sell everything. So he walks away and he's kind of upset. So I say, okay, now to my students, I say, so suppose 20 years later, Jesus has, has died and, and this person comes up to Paul. Teacher, what, what must I do to have eternal life? Does Paul say, keep the commandments? <laughs> No, Paul's whole point is that following the Jewish law is not going to make you right with God. Paul says, believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus died for your sins. Accept him and believe in the resurrection and be baptized and you'll be saved. And so it, it is really, a, it's not just a different answer. It is, it is a contrary answer. This is why I say today that Christians today are not Jesus Christians. Christians today are Paulinian Christians because Christians today follow the teachings of Paul, which ran contrary or contradictory to Jesus's teachings, which further invalidates the Bible as being inerrant because it is not. Because in the story of the rich young ruler, and it's not a parable, it's not an allegory, it's supposedly an event that actually happened. The rich young ruler comes up to Jesus and say, hey, how do I get into paradise? He asked him if he's followed all the commandments. He said, I follow all the commandments. So he's doing all the Old Testament stuff. And then he says, sell all your things, give it to the poor and then follow me. The rich young ruler got a lot of shit. So he goes away sad. Here's the thing. The disciples immediately after that were saying, oh, shit. If the rich young ruler isn't going to get into heaven, then how in the hell are we going to get into heaven? And the, the, the problem, the reason why they say this is because according to the Jewish tradition, your righteousness is, can be measured by the finances that you have. This is why all your Old Testament heroes got money. Abraham, money, money. Isaac got money. Jacob got money. Joseph had money, lost money. Go back second dude in Egypt got money. Moses, prince of Egypt, got money. Even when they go out and they leave Egypt, all the Israelites are giving them gold. I mean, all the Egyptians are giving them gold and silver and all this stuff. They got money. They go conquer people and they take their money. Joshua go conquer people and take their money. First, when he took Jericho, he said, no, nah, you can't have the money. But then when he goes to take some other cities, they get to get the money. But everybody got money. And people are going to say, well, Jesus didn't have money. Jesus had a trade based on his daddy. Y'all say carpenter now, but before the anti-Masonic movement, it says stonemason. Stonemasons were very high paid individuals back in those days, were some of the very few people that could go from country to country without having what we would call today a passport. So Jesus wasn't broke. Plus, there's that part in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples say, well, in order for us to feed these 5,000 people, it would take the 13 of us working 30 days to feed five, 6,000 people. How much money do you have to have in order to feed five, 6,000 people? How much money you got to have? You can't be broke. You're not poor. Mm -mm. Martha had money. One of the few women that had some money. So the disciples were perplexed. This man is a righteous young ruler. He's righteous, but he can't get into heaven. But Jesus tells him that he has to follow those commandments and that he has to then follow Jesus. But then Paul only says, you just have to believe in the death and resurrection and follow Jesus. That's it. There's nothing about keeping the commandments. Now, I know some of the Christians are going to come on here and say that, well, in order to follow Jesus, you have to follow the commandments because Jesus is God. But the others, are, other Christians are going to come on and say that, well, the rich young ruler came before the resurrection. So that was how he would get into heaven. But after Jesus died, it all flip flopped and changed. And all you got to do is believe in Jesus. But then you'll become a new creature. So then if you become a new creature, then you're going to follow those commandments. The problem is that most Christians only think about the Ten Commandments to which these states like Oklahoma and 
Louisiana would want to put up in the schools. But those Ten Commandments are not the actual Ten Commandments. The only time commandments are actually said is when it talked about when it was redone and that had stuff about not using yeast in your sacrifices to this God in your holy days and worshiping and following the holy days and not boiling a baby cow in his mother's milk, which had nothing to do with that first ten. But even if you took the first ten, the second ten, and then in Deuteronomy and Numbers and Leviticus, it says over and over again to follow all of his commandments, laws, ordinances, and rites. So that means following all the stuff, the high holy days, the refuge cities for those who did not commit murder, who committed murder accidentally. Priests using magic stones of Thurman and Ehrman in their witchcraft to figure out if somebody is guilty or innocent if they don't have enough evidence. Following all that, every seventh year freeing your slaves, all that. Those are the commandments and ordinances and rites and rituals and laws that were handed down. You're supposed to follow all of them. But here Paul clearly diverges from the teachings of Jesus and it's not his only time. So if the overwhelming majority of the New Testament is supposedly written by Paul, even though only seven books are actually are, are most scholars would give to Paul and the other books are it's supposedly written by people who were followers of Paul or people who wrote and then they just put Paul's name on there. If Paul wrote the overwhelming majority of what y'all follow, y'all are not following Jesus. Y'all are following Paul. And that shows the difference between the two. And, and in it, it shows the difference of the two, which makes your Bible not coherent and does not have univocality. So how do you know what to believe and what not to believe? You don't. You're just following what the church has told you to believe and not what you have studied and researched and figured out. That is why we deconstructed, because we studied, we researched, and we figure out with critical thinking what's real, what's not real. And we find the majority of the Bible to not be historically correct, to not be morally correct, and definitely cannot be the word of any one true God. Y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.